A warm welcome to all our viewers to the YouTube channel of Sri Swaminarayan Physiotherapy College, Rani, Ahmedabad. I, Dr. Mahima Rawal, today will learn about the mechanical cervical traction and its practical demonstration. So let's start. So first we'll see basics of the traction and mechanical cervical traction. After that we'll start with the practical aspect. So first of all, what is traction? So the traction is a process of pulling apart or drawing apart the joint surfaces. It is application of a mechanical or the manual force to the body in a way that separates the joint surfaces, elongate the soft tissue or align the bone fragments. Now what are the different types of the cervical traction so there are basically two types of the cervical traction the first one that is the mechanical and the second one that is the manual so in this video we'll cover the mechanical aspect of the cervical traction now the mechanical means the traction is applied with the machine so in that the motorized unit is used with the auto traction benches and the objective of the mechanical cervical traction that is the amount of the force that can be applied is measured. The second, This is the traction table that can be used in the mechanical cervical traction. This is the traction machine and this is the head halter. So in that there are two types of the strap the one that is over the mandibular and the second one that is the occipital strap second type of the traction that is the manual so manual means the name suggests it can be applied with the therapist by the therapist so the disadvantage that is the force cannot be measured like the mechanical cervical traction and the advantage that is it can be applied at any location so you can applied it at the home now moving towards the indication for the mechanical cervical traction so it can be used if the patient is having the spinal nerve root impingement like the disc prolapse and uh, spondylosis so disc prolapse that is the disc bulging and the spondylosis means uh, degenerative changes so because of the degenerative changes there will be narrowing of the canal so if we apply the traction it will improve the joint space and it will improve the blood circulation to that part and it, that way it will relieve the pain the second most common indication that is the hypermobility of the joints third that is the muscle spasm so if the patient is having the paraspinal muscle spasm then the traction is indicated so in this figure you can see between the two vertebrae the disc is prolapsing on the posterior side and it is compressing the nerve root so if we apply the traction to that part so it will improve the joint space and that way it will remove the pain of the patient now moving towards the contraindication so in which condition the traction is contraindicated so if the patient is having the acute strain sprain and the inflammation then the traction is contraindicated then the spinal hypermobility malignancy infection and the osteoporosis the last contraindication that is the subluxation dislocation and the instability so here in this figure you can see the first one that is the normal articulation of the head of the femur to the acetabulum the second that is the partial contact of the head of the femur to the acetabulum so it is subluxated and the third one that is the fully dislocated head of the femur to the acetabulum because head of the femur is in not in contact with the acetabulum so uh, in this condition if the joint is unstable if the joint is hypermobile if the joint uh, if the joint have the malignancy infection then the traction is contraindicated now the mechanical cervical traction so we'll start with the practical demonstration so this is the head halter and the strap 
that is that we can use for the mechanical cervical traction now moving towards the parameter so first uh, in this machine you have to select if the patient is coming with the first time then you have to select the new patient if the patient is coming uh, on a regular basis and if you have saved the data of the patient then you can select the recall memory so first you have select the new patient after that the second parameter as we discussed earlier there are lumbar traction and the cervical traction so first if, uh, we are here demonstrating the mechanical cervical traction so you have to select the cervical mode of the traction after that you have to select the mode that is the intermittent and the static one okay so intermittent means you have to, uh, you can give the hold and the relax period that is the intermittent mode okay so in the intermittent uh, if the patient is having the disc prolapse or the hyper uh, hyper hypermobility or the muscle spasm then you can select the intermittent mode if the patient is having the acute condition then you can select the static mode static mode means uh, you can give the traction continuous continuously that is the static mode okay so that are the basically two modes of the traction that you can give into the mechanical cervical traction after that this is the traction kgs so here you can see the uh, 5 6 7 8 10 and 15 kgs okay so basically in the mechanical cervical traction you have to divide the body weight with the seventh okay so one seventh of the body weight that you have to give to the patient so let's take an example if the patient is having the 49 uh, kgs of the body then you can give the traction uh, kg approximately 7 kgs okay so 49 divided by 7 is equal to 7 kgs so one seventh of the body weight that you have to give to the patient so after that you have to select the traction kg so amount of the force the next one that is the hold and the relax period so if you are selecting the static traction then no need to select the hold and the relax period because static means the continuous okay so in the acute condition you can select the static mode in the disc prolapse or the uh, muscle spasm or the hypermobility you can select the intermittent mode so in the intermittent mode you can select the hold and the relax period so if the patient is having the disc prolapse then you can select the 60 second of the hold period and 30 second of the relax period okay if the patient is having the muscle spasm then you can select the 5 second of the hold period and 5 second of the relax period and if the patient is having the joint hypermobility or if you want to perform the distraction of the joint then you can select the 15 second of the hold and the 15 second of the relax period after that you have to select the timings so time means that is basically according to the patient condition so in the acute phase you can select the 5 to 10 minutes of the time total time and if the patient is having the disc prolapse or the uh, spasm or the hypermobility then you can select the maximally up to 20 minutes okay so that is the time of the treatment now for the traction you have to follow if you are applying the mechanical cervical traction then you have to follow the uh, following step the first step that is the you have to check for the indication and the contraindication so in the mechanical cervical traction the major indication that is the uh, cervical radiculopathy muscle spasm or the hypermobility of the joint and the contraindication that is the carotid or the vertebral artery disease if the patient is having the carotid or the vertebral artery disease hypermobility subluxation malignancy and infection then you cannot give the mechanical cervical traction 
after that you have to select the deter uh, mode of the traction so second step that is the determine the mode of the traction okay so mode of the traction that is basically the first one you are giving it with the machine okay so that is the mechanical traction and the second uh, you are mode that is the intermittent and the static traction so intermittent that is you have to add the hold and the relax period and the static that is you can give to uh, to the patient continuously the third step that is explain the procedure to the patient so you have to explain the whole procedure to the patient what you are going to perform on to the patient the fourth step that is the positioning of the patient so here uh, in this uh, mechanical cervical traction you can give the sitting posi position and the supine position but the most commonly used position that is the sitting position into the chair so after that you have to give the positioning of the patient the step 5 that is you have to add the dosage and the duration so as we discussed earlier about the parameters so in the acute condition you can give the static mode in the uh, in the disc bulging spasm and uh, hypermobility you can give the intermittent mode then the step 3 that is the explain procedure to the patient that is uh, you need to explain the whole procedure to the patient what you are going to perform onto the patient the fourth step that is the positioning of the patient so uh, in that mechanical cervical traction you can give the supine position or else the sitting position but the ideal position that is the sitting position so uh, after that you need to set the dosage and the duration and all the parameters as we discussed earlier the last and the main step that is you have to check about the safety of the patient so you can give the safety switch to the patient for the safety purpose and to avoid the uh, discomfort of the patient so here you can see in this video the patient is sitting into the chair and I have applied the strap the one strap part that is on the mandible and the another that is the occipital strap and I have attached it with the halter to the machine after that I have set the all the parameters according to the patient condition and for the safety purpose I have uh, given the safety switch to the patient so this is the basically mechanical cervical traction procedure Thank you viewers to listening to me. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.